Hello and welcome to episode number 75 of Week in Review. That's three quarters of a hundred. My name is Sean, 100% of the spelling of my name. And on this week's show, we're talking about Toy Story 4, and we're looking forward to this week's new releases. You're probably wondering to yourself, why only one item this week? Why just Toy Story 4? Well, it's probably because I could gush about this movie for roughly the next 97,000 minutes because it is a magnificent movie that I love very, very much. And I know that the title's a little bit clickbaity, and so if you clicked on it, hey, welcome to the show. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you stuck to it to this point and you'll stick through the rest of the review because I should be pretty good. If I'm being totally honest with you, I was a little bit nervous about this movie. Last week I talked about how Toy Story 3 was the perfect end cap to a perfect trilogy and my worry is that you're going to dip one time into the well too many and you're going to come out with not necessarily a bad movie but a subpar sort of product. Like you have this like perfection echelon of movies in Toy Story 1, 2, and 3. Do you really want to gamble and dip one more time in that well? We've seen this happen a couple of times over the years. Indiana Jones is the one that pops to my head. The newest one, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, is not a great movie, and it definitely is the worst of the four because they went back to that well one too many times. I mean, like, I hate Temple of Doom, but at least it was made in that original trilogy. And if you look at the Lego set of movies, including Lego Movie, Lego Movie 2, Lego Batman Movie, you have Lego Ninjago, which wasn't well received and didn't do super well at the box office. So you have these two franchises that have four movies, but definitely have the one that's like ooh, you probably should have just left well enough alone. And I even remember going into the Lego Movie 2 thinking, like, if this movie is 75% as good as the first movie, that's a win in my book. And granted, the Lego Movie is working with a little bit different set of rules. You're taking a movie that is based on a brand or franchise and you're not really expecting much, but then it's this kind of lightning in a bottle piece of magic that is both funny and interesting and creative and emotionally resonant and like just this complete package of like holy crap wow this is shocking how good this movie is and no matter how hard the lego movie 2 tries it's never going to be able to recreate that magic again and the lego movie 2 which is one of the best movies of the year so far does what it can with what it has and it made a really fantastic and worthy sequel to the first movie. Something else the Toy Story franchise hasn't actually managed to do is outdate the older movies to make them unwatchable. You see this with Spider-Man 2 versus Spider-Man 1 where the filmmakers went in and they said we want to make Spider-Man 2's worst scene six times better than the best scene in the first Spider-Man movie and if you watch Spider-Man 2 and you try and go back and watch Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2 is so much better that it makes the first one unwatchable and because I watched all three of these movies before leading up to the fourth like being able to rewatch them and be like man these still hold up 24 years later 20 years later nine years later is a feat in of itself so the bar is set extremely high for these I mean even more so than most movies or sequels like like 75% for the Lego movie is like being pretty generous. Toy Story 4 needs to be 99% as good as the other three movies in this franchise. Somehow Toy Story 4 clears that bar and is every bit as good as the three that preceded it. Toy Story 4 is a tremendous movie. At every point it is a tremendous movie. It is funny, it is sweet, it is kind, it is caring, it is heartfelt, it is bittersweet, it is just it's everything you want in a movie and it is one of the most gorgeously animated movies I've ever seen in my life. I, I just want to sit right at the front of the screen and just let the images wash over me. There is so much detail in this movie and it starts with the opening sequence which takes place in a very big rainstorm and the way that like reflections happen off of certain characters and the stitching in like Woody and the tearing of Buzz's um, stickers on his uh, himself, I guess. I was going to say uniform, but that doesn't make any sense. But the, the way, the point is, the way Buzz's stickers are kind of starting to come off and they're a little bit worn and tattered is just, it's amazing what they were able to do with this animation. Thankfully, though, this movie has the story to back it up. The movie also introduces a tremendous new set of characters with the inclusion of Forky. I like Forky because he's fun and engaging and he has that kind of Buzz Lightyear aspect of being like a brand new toy, but he doesn't understand that concept and he really just wants to be back in the trash where he came from and that led to a lot of laughs early in the movie. The basic plot setup of this movie is... 
Bonnie's family is going to go on a trip and she's going to take all of her toys. And then after Forky jumps out a window, Woody has to go rescue him. And then the toys have to stall long enough for Woody to get back with Forky because Forky means a lot to Bonnie. Something that's really cool about this movie is the attachment to the things that kids create. Like, even though Forky looks like he's kind of like a silly character, he's just a, he's a spork with googly eyes, which, by the way, googly eyes, never not funny. Put more of those in movies because random movements and eyes, for some reason, just tickles my pickle in a way that, like, there are a bunch of times where he's, like, just sitting there and his eye will, like, swoop down. And it's just the funniest thing in the world. Like, it's such a good visual gag. I wish more movies used it. I don't know how you would use googly eyes in more movies. I'm not a movie writer. I just talk about them on the internet. So that's not my job. Figure it out. I could put some googly eyes on this hat, though. That might be pretty funny. He's made of a spork. He has the googly eyes. And he also has a uh, pipe cleaner as arms and then a broken... Um, uh, popsicle stick that has Bonnie written on the bottom of it and it's attached to the bottom and that's how he walks around and I like that they showed just how attached Bonnie was to that sort of thing it's like well you can make a new Forky and it's like no like this is the thing that I created out of the kind of spontaneity and I really just want that specific piece and I thought that aspect of the movie was really sweet and really felt like Bonnie was like a real kid and not like a movie kid sort of if that makes sense it also introduces some other characters I thought uh, Duke Kaboom was absolutely fantastic he is the exact like type of comedic character that I like who's just like super confident like doing a bunch of poses again almost like in a Simpsons sort of way of like pretty funny okay you could probably end the joke now okay it's really funny sort of that ebb and flow of like oh he's posing and it's, it's really really good we also get uh gabby gabby and this movie also reminded me that ventriloquism dolls are utterly terrifying kind of like the monkey from toy story 3 but somehow like etched up a notch because they are absolutely horrifying there are parts of this movie that are like a genuine like horror movie of like there are like two or three jump scares in a kid's movie, in this animated movie where I'm like, oh my God, the, the thing, just get away with it. Throw it out a window, get rid of it. I don't want to see it anymore. Then you also have Bunny and Ducky who get introduced into the movie in an interesting way. And I thought were really entertaining. They were probably my biggest question mark going in because the um, commercials that I had seen leading up to the movie Something about their style of humor just didn't seem to fit the movie, but that was washed away instantly as soon as they showed up. It fit right in. They worked perfectly. I don't know if the trailers just got cut kind of weird or the, the commercials got cut kind of weird. I think the one thing that's going to get lost in this particular movie, and it's a character I haven't actually talked about, a new character that I haven't talked about, is Gabby Gabby's storyline. At the beginning, I wasn't really sure if I was going to like her character, and they definitely set her up in a specific way for you to think one way about her. But I really loved her growth and evolution and the way that storyline worked out. I think that that's going to get lost in the shuffle of the ending of this movie, which I won't give away. But I, it's such a beautiful arc. Like, this is Woody's movie. Buzz plays a very large role in it. Unfortunately, the other characters don't get a ton to do, which is a bummer because they've created such interesting characters that I really love and care about. And I thought they would continue a little bit more with that in this movie because Toy Story 3 felt like such an ensemble movie. And there's a lot more of the human element in this particular movie. And it just felt like, even though this is an ensemble movie, it's an ensemble of new characters instead of the old characters. It's not a drawback because the new characters are overall great and really engaging and fun. But there is part of me that's like, man, I really wish that I had more rex trixie uh mr and mrs potato head ham like i want to see them do more they get things to do but it's not it, it's more of a like toy story one scenario where they're in one area while buzz and woody go do something else there's also a very small subplot of uh Buzz Lightyear finding his inner voice that's very very funny. We also get reintroduced to Bo that is not a spoiler it's in the trailer she's on the poster and her character is fantastic. I like the the style she has and her attitude's a little bit different and I like that it kind of throws Woody for a, bit, a little bit of a loop. Woody's as stubborn and as frustrating as ever and he for as much as he's right he kind of goes about it in a way that's a little bit cocky and it kind of seems to rub some of the toys the wrong way even though he ends up being right you're kind of like I don't really want you to be right because you didn't go about it the way that we should have done. Like we should just let 
people do things on their own devices, but he is correct in ways that make sense. And it kind of relates back to that thing where like Bonnie is a very real kid and they do such a good job of like, I don't remember the first day of like kindergarten or kindergarten orientation, but like, boy, did they put me in the shoes of like how scary that must be. And holy mackerel, is it like a very like tense emotional sequence. Everything in this movie really works for me personally. And it goes in such a bittersweet direction that I actually couldn't believe what I was watching where I was sitting in the theater and I'm like, no, you're, you're doing this. You're going in this route no you're not no there's gonna be you're gonna no do uh, okay i guess this is i guess this is where we're going fuck not only is it a tremendously bittersweet moment but it's such a tremendous installation of the idea of sometimes doing things that are the best for you can hurt people that you love and care about and i like the idea that like even in toy story 3 it talks about like hitting a certain age and moving on from like childish sorts of things. I like that Pixar is so willing to push um, like these kind of like deeper things on a younger audience and at least put it in the back of their head. Uh, somebody was explaining to me like the end of uh, Monsters University where yeah they get kicked out of college but even if you goof up like you can still make your dreams come true. You can still work really hard to amend those mistakes and get to where you want to be. You can also look at uh, Inside Out in their um, embracing of emotion and in their embracement of being sad instead of happy and letting their emotions all take part in how you're feeling overall as a person. And I think that's a good idea and I think it works really, really well because not only are the, the lessons, I guess you could put, kind of... It sounds weird to say, but like sneakily put into the back of kids' heads. And I've just loved the way that Pixar's willing to kind of show some of the like deeper meanings in their movies. I, I just, it's something that I think is absolutely fantastic and is what sets them apart. And it's all these individual characters, both new and old, all these plot arcs and character shifts and changes and all the heart and humor and the bittersweet pieces that are all put into the perfect place. And it just feels like such a cohesive and wonderful experience. And I can't encourage you enough to go see this movie in theaters, go see it on the biggest screen possible and just absorb everything that they throw at you. It is emotionally engaging and fulfilling. It's funny. It's heartfelt. It's bittersweet. I'm probably repeating it myself at this point, but I don't even care. I can't even get the words out. I love this movie so much and they continue to set the bar so high with these Toy Story movies. It is amazing that they've been able to do this and this is an absolutely terrific fourth piece into what is probably the greatest movie franchise ever made. I love it so very much and it is absolutely like I didn't really know what I wanted out of Toy Story 4 and then I watched it and I was like that's what I wanted and they nailed it in every sense of the word they nailed this movie and it is absolutely tremendous go see toy story 4 on the biggest loudest most fun hugest screen you can because it's really really great now if you'll excuse me i'm going to continue to eat my five day old tear soaked popcorn finally on this week's show we'll look forward to the new releases there is nothing in theaters dumbo is on blu-ray and the sinking city hits consoles this week i think it hits on thursday which is like kind of a weird day uh but that game is made from the same people that do the sherlock holmes games and it's like a um oh shit what do they call it it's a, like a detective game that's not the word i'm looking for i know what a detective game is that's the word i can come up with it's a like Lovecraftian sort of mishmash detective sort of thing that looks and sounds really interesting and I'm very curious about it. You can also pick up Judgment in stores, which had a weird release schedule. I actually mentioned it last week and it was available digitally last Friday on the PlayStation Store, but it wasn't available in stores until today, so that's kind of odd. And then finally on Friday, you can pick up Super Mario Maker 2 for the Nintendo Switch. Having it on the Nintendo Switch is super helpful to me. I only just recently bought a Wii U for Yoshi's Woolly World. Uh, still haven't played it, shocker. Um, and this game sounds interesting to me, not from a level creation perspective, because I'm just not that type of creative person, but from a, um, 
like testing of other people's levels it sounds pretty interesting and i'm looking forward to giving that a shot and inevitably throwing joy cons across the room because somebody made a level that has like a one in four billion shot of being made if you think i'm making that up there is a level in super mario maker the first one that has a one in like multiple billion shot of being complete and there are people who are running multiple nintendo wii U's to try to beat this level it's super weird don't make levels like that why are you being mean just let me bounce around on Yoshi without killing him at the end, you jerks. As for the streams this week, Wednesday we're going to check out Astro Near. That'll be with Ashley, so that's very exciting. Friday is going to be a Space Jam Hoop Fest hype stream because I love Hoop Fest. It's my favorite weekend of the year. It is an amazing event, and I love it very much. And what better way to celebrate than by playing a, like, 20-year-old game that has anthropomorphic animals in it? And that stream will be with Ashley as well. Uh, Saturday and Sunday are to be announced. I'm not really sure. I'm thinking Sinking City, but it may change. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Weekend Review. If you like the content, you can scroll on down and hit that subscribe button. And you can scroll on down a little bit more and let me know what you thought of Toy Story 4 if you saw it. Be sure to check out the streams on Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday over on twitch.tv slash Tracks. They're bound to be fun, so come check those out. You can always catch the VODs right here on YouTube, and that way you're prepared and you're in the right place for more Week in Review, which posts every Tuesday. See you next week. I feel like I forgot something, but I don't remember what it was. Uh.